morning, Movement Church. I'm so happy that you decided to join us for another service of the Movement Church at home. And if this is your first time joining us today, well, welcome to the family. Guys, I'm so excited because we finally made it to my favorite time of the year. It's Christmas. Who else is excited for all the Christmas carols and all the holiday parties filled with good food? Mm, I'm so excited. But let's not forget about the real reason for this season, the best Christmas present we'll ever get, Jesus Christ. Guys, do you know that friend who doesn't just have a birthday, but has more of a birth month? I want that level of hype and excitement from you, Movement Church. Let's make December Jesus' birth month on social media so that we can remind everyone what the true meaning of Christmas really is. Speaking of which, don't forget to connect with us on social media so that you can keep up with all the events that we have in store for you. You can find us on Instagram at themovement.church or on Facebook at The Movement Church. Now, who's ready to hear the Word of God? Come on guys, let's prepare our notes and prepare our hearts for whatever God has in store for you today. But first, let's check out The Movement News.
What a beautiful worship church. I just want to welcome you this morning to the Movement Church. If you're watching right now with family and friends or if you're tuning in online, I just want to say that, hey, I am honored I'm and privileged to have you together with us this morning. And I believe God has great things in store for you. Amen. Okay, so church, before you go deeper into the Word of God, I just want to share quickly about giving. Hey, how many of you know that it's December already, yeah? December, we all know that it's a Christmas season. It's a season of celebration. If you ask most people what symbolizes this season, this what tradition you normally have, most people would say we give gifts to one another or precisely they would say we exchange gifts, okay? But at the heart of Christmas is the never old story that God so loved the world that He gave His only Son born in a humble state, came down to heaven, from heaven to earth to give His life for us on the cross. So church, I know that we cannot possibly even the score by giving back to God because His gift was too great, too precious, but out of our thanksgiving for the unfailing love of God for what He had done for us, we should respond from a generous heart by doing all we can for Him. Not because we want to repay God back, but to say thank you God for such an indescribable gift. 2 Corinthians 9, 13 and 15 says this, Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And verse 15 says, Thanks be to God for His indescribable gift. Church, let us be reminded this season that it is the season of giving and the season of sharing. Sharing the gospel of Christ, sharing the greatest love story in the universe, sharing love, sharing blessings with one another, not just because we want to celebrate the tradition of Christmas, but to reflect but to respond with a thanksgiving that flow from the gift of love, the joy, the salvation that have come through Jesus, the beloved Son of God. So today we want to give because God had first given His indescribable gift. And the least that we can do this season is to be generous with God and to be the extension of God's hands by sharing our blessings with one another. Amen. Okay, if you're ready to give, let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your indescribable gift, the gift of your beloved son, Jesus, who became poor so that we can be rich, who died for our sake so that we can have an abundant and eternal life. And today, God, we want to offer our thanksgiving. Let us be a reflection of your love through our obedience and let us be a blessing for the church and the people. In Jesus' name, everybody who is ready to bring our tithing and offering says, Amen and Amen. Love it, church. In the Movement Church, we want to make giving as easy as possible for everybody. And on the screen right now, you can see the multiple ways of giving. And online is definitely the easiest way to give this season. There's a QR code right there that you can scan that will take you straight to our online giving page. Church, let's share the love of God through our generosity. All right? Now, who is ready for the Word of God? All right. I hope you're excited for the Word of God. We have something great in store for you today. And we want to believe that this is not just a season of celebration. I know that this year has been a bit of roller coaster for everybody. But I believe God is still good. He is still faithful. And His Word never fails. His Word is yes and amen in our life. Amen. So let's enjoy together. Let's get our hearts ready for the Word of God. Good morning, the Movement Church. Come on, somebody. Welcome, welcome to the second week of our December series, Change of Plan. How good is that? Church, can you believe that we're almost at the end of the year? Yeah. Wow, that has been so quick, hey? But today, I am 
extra pump because I know that God is going to do mighty things in your life this morning. Come on, church. Oh, come on. Give me a shout if you believe that, church. Woo! So good, so good. Today is a very interesting topic. You know, the title that I entitled this is When Life Throws a Plot Twist. When Life Throws a Plot Twist. You know, boom. We all love a plot twist. In a movie, we all love it, you know, when, when you're watching like a very exciting movie, like, whoa, I didn't expect that. Like, whoa, he, he lived in after three days, it's so good. Wow. But church, the question, the, the thing I want to tell you is none of us are excited when the plot twist happens in our life. Yes. Yeah, it's not going to be exciting. So I'll tell you a quick story. Last year, uh, around this time, last year, so... We were planning a family vaca vacation, you know, and at the same time planned for our son's first birthday. And um, so we planned a three-week vacation for March in the Philippines and Gabriel's first party. And then we planned a trip to Japan. So everything is prepared, you know, the catering, the food, the, the, the performers, the decorations, the venue, everything is prepared. And, and you know, I, I don't know if you're, if you're like me when I'm traveling. Man, I like to prepare everything in Excel sheet. You know, uh, we, we planned a trip to Japan. Like, where are we going to go? What time are we going to go there? How are we going to get there? How much is it to get there? Where are we going to stand when we take the photo? What are we going to order? Everything is ready in the Excel sheet with time and how long to get there. That's how much I prepare. You know, when I was preparing for it, I said, man, this is a foolproof plan. Nothing is going to stop my plan. We were so excited because, well, this is going to be the break that we needed after our first year of being parents. Until COVID happened. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 no. All of a sudden, my, my foolproof plan is falling apart. Oh, my God. What are we going to do? Plot twist. Why does it happen in our life? That's the question. So today, church, we're going to learn the reasons why through the life of Joseph. Why plot twists happen in our life. So if you have your Bible, open it in Genesis 37. We're going to read the story of Joseph, the dreamer. So his dream is like, one day I'm going to be a leader. One day, one day he's, everyone's going to bow down around him. And you know, wow, that's an awesome dream. You know, it, life is good. Bring it on. But one key detail is missing from the dream. Is that the dream didn't show him how he will reach that position. So let's read it. Uh, chapter 37. The dream goes, the, uh, Joseph said, listen, listen to this dream I had. We were all out in the field gathering bundles of wheat. All of a sudden my bundle stood straight up and your bundle circled around it and bowed down to mine and then there's another dream this goes the sun and the moon and the 11 stars bowed down to me I mean wow what a dream right I mean wouldn't you be excited if you had a dream like that you know had a vision like that for your future I'm gonna grieve I'm gonna be great one day I'm gonna be a leader one day but you know what church just a few verses after that the story goes when Joseph reached his brothers, they ripped off the fancy coat he was wearing, grabbed him, and threw him into a cistern. Wow, what a plot twist. And wait, there's more. His brothers pulled Joseph out of the cistern and sold him for 20 pieces of silver. Wow, plot twist. It's an unsuspected occurrence or turn of events in the story that completely changes the direction of the outcome of the plot from the direction it was likely to go. That's a plot twist. So I know church, a lot of you are probably, your prayers sounds like, oh God, take me from A to B. Please God. But sometimes, you know, when God answers our prayers, His answers is, yes, I'm going to take you there, but you have to go through L, M, N, O, P, and all the other letters. That's just how it goes. And maybe, church, some of you, your life is going through a plot twist right now. 
Whereas you already had a clear vision in your mind where you're heading to. You already know the path that you're going to take. Then it takes an unlikely turn. Wow, what are you going to do? What's the reason for that? You're probably asking, why am I not married yet? In my plan, I would have had two kids by now. Hey, I, I, I should have been a leader of this organization by now. Our connect, our connect group should have been doubled by now. I'm supposed to be further by now. And you're probably crying out to God, God, I, I, I want to I wanna, I wanna go there. I want to go further, God, but you keep driving me to the other direction. God, it doesn't make sense, the things that is happening around me. And you're left with asking God, why? Why? God, you showed me a dream. You showed me a vision. Why am I moving further and further away from it? Why does God allow these kind of things to happen? So what happens when the future we envision doesn't come the way we see it? How can we trust God in this new re reality that we're facing? So church, I'm glad you asked that question because today I want to encourage you with three reasons why God changes our plans. Reason number one, if you have your notes, is God always has a better plan. God always has a better plan. You know, most of us, we like to plan ahead. Yeah, that's good. It's always, we plan for our future. We plan for our family. When, when are we going to have kids? We plan to, for, for a college degree. We plan to start a business, a travel around the world, and all those things. And I'm all for planning because it's good. It organizes everything. But most of the time, God messes up with our plans like what happened to Joseph. But as we are going to learn later, we're going to learn that God will ultimately fulfill what Joseph saw in his dream. And even more than what he could have done by himself. Amen? Because you know what? In reality, is often we think our plans make sense with what we think God wants us to do in our life. In our mind, it sounds like, oh God, this is the perfect plan. There is nothing better than this. I know God, I feel good about this plan. Oh, it's so good. This is perfect. You know, but if we haven't consulted God about our plans, the chances are He has something bigger and better in mind for us. Come on, church. I know you want a bigger and better plan for your life. Amen? Amen? I want to share my, my story when I was um, a resident in Singapore. I was working in this office that was, man, it was extremely toxic environment. You know, the boss was nitpicking on everything that we do. He has very unrealistic deadlines that, we, that he gives to us. And, and back then, I was a new Christian. And, and it's no problem. I said to myself, that's okay. Stress, that's fine. I'll just pray for it because my God is powerful, you know. God, take away the stress, you know, take away the anxiety that I feel every day. God, you're powerful. I believe in you. Come on, God. And my plan was to keep working in that office stress-free. That was my prayer. That was my plan. Thank you, Lord, for the answered prayer. Until one afternoon, my boss asked me to have coffee with him. And I was like, oh, yes, God, this is going to be my answer to my prayer. There's going to be a breakthrough in my career now because the boss just asked me for coffee. And very quickly, the boss, my boss told me, don't come to office tomorrow. Today will be your last day. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you kidding me? So I stood up, flipped the table. No, I didn't do that. that but that was my plan. But thank God, God had a better plan. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So what happened next? That was a surprise to me, man. All of us, had, all, out of the blue, he told me that. Church, what happened next? Remember, when God takes away something, he always replaces it with something better. Amen? So what happened? I was jobless for three months. You're probably going to ask me, how is that better, bro? How is that better? What did I do? I trusted God that he had a better plan. I kept praying. I kept worshiping. I kept praising him in the situation until one day I got a call from one of my colleagues that used to work in that office. And she said, I'm putting up my own architecture firm. 
do you want to work with me? And of course I said yes, you know. Uh, and I've been working in that office until the day I moved uh, out of Singapore. And not only that he became uh, a complete opposite of my previous boss, but she became a really good friend. See what happens, church, when you trust God that he has a better plan for your life. Isaiah 55 verse 8 says, My plans aren't your plans, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my plans higher than your plans. Church, maybe you are in a season of your life right now where it seems that you are further and further away from your prayers, from your vision, and you don't know what to do, and you don't know who to turn to, and a lot of things doesn't make sense in your life. Church, let me encourage you that God's plans will always be greater and more beautiful than your disappointments. Amen? Church, God may steer your plans elsewhere, but His plans and purpose are always greater. Amen? God truly knows what He is doing. You know, He usually takes longer than we would like. Like often He leads us through strange territory like what He did to Joseph. You know, sometimes he defers or even destroys our dream. But God knows exactly what he is doing. Amen? Amen? God is accomplishing more in you and through you more than you can think or imagine. So the question is, are you in a place that you never expected to be right now? You know, God has taken you on a path that you never would have willfully chosen by yourself. God hasn't deserted you. He hasn't forgotten you. He hasn't made a mistake because He knows exactly what He is doing. He knows exactly what you need and where you need to be. Amen? Amen. The, the Bible says in Genesis 39 verse 2 that the Lord was with Joseph so he succeeded in everything that he did. Wow. This season of your life, it may look scary, but the Lord is with you. Amen? Just like what he did to Joseph. He was with Joseph all the time. Amen? Amen. Before we go to point number two, I love this part in Joseph's story. He says, his brothers pulled Joseph out of the cistern and sold him for 20 pieces of silver to the Ishmaelites. Church, you know what? Sometimes the things that are trying to hurt us, God can use those to fulfill his plans for us. Amen? God can use anyone or anything to give you the better plan that he has in mind. Amen? Amen. So point number two. Are you ready for the point number two? Come on, church. The second reason why God changes our plan is he wants to redirect you. God wants to redirect you. Church, how many of you have the habit of using GPS in your car and then not following what it says? <laughs> yeah? I do that sometimes, you know. Um, I place the address, you know, and off we go. And then after a while, let me take this turn. And then Carla would say, why did you take the turn? And then spoken like a true man, I told her, trust me, this is faster. But what about the GPS? Don't worry. Don't worry about the GPS. It will redirect to our new direction. But it's asking you to go back to where we were. No, 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 it's not. Don't worry. It's not. No, we just continue and it will just continue from our path. That's okay. And then the GPS goes, make a U-turn, make a U-turn, make a U-turn. And then the arrival times became 20 minutes, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, 35 minutes. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe we need to go back. Okay. <laughs> My mistake. I'm sorry, you know. Our life church is very similar because a lot of times we are already in the right track with God. We follow His ways. We follow His will until we take a turn. Why do we take a turn? Because in our mind, oh God, this is the faster way. God, I can get there faster if I do this. You know, I want to get there, God, as soon as I can. And in that process, we end up getting further and further off track. You know, the Bible says that a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. 
today, church, will you let God direct your steps? Because the only way to get back on track is if we humble ourselves, you know? If that moment that we come to a realization that, hey, God, you're right. This is the wrong direction. I surrender my life to you. Then he can begin to redirect your life. The Bible says it's not by our might nor by power, but by the Spirit of God. Amen? You know, sometimes God will just shut down what He didn't want us to do or would not be beneficial to our life. You know, plot twists, they happen in our life because God wants us to step back in His path. Amen? And each time that we step on His Word, he will meet you there. He will confirm His Word. He, makes, he will make the provision that He will faithfully do what He says He would do. Amen? Church, remember this, that a redirection from God are times God is most deeply at work in our life. When you find painful and disappointing roadblocks in our life, in your way, God may be cleansing your slate. You know, and why would, why would God do this? Why would God just redirect us all of a sudden? It's often because God wants us to cling to His eternal plans and design for us instead of us letting us go forward on our way, which is, may not be the best way for us. It is also God's way of redirecting our focus back to Him. Church, let me encourage you that if you have God with you, if you have God with you, you're not starting again from scratch because now you have fresh anointing. Now that you have God with you, you've got more wisdom to start over. You, you, you're ready for the mighty things that God has in store for you. I love what the Bible promises in Psalm 60 that with God's help, we will do mighty things. So good. Yes, you may have lost that job. Yes, you may have had that miscarriage. Yes, you may have failed in that business. But when a redirection from God, you can get, be guaranteed that your plan may have failed, but God's plan will not fail. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11, it says that I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. Church, plot twists happen in our lives because God wants to redirect us to a greater life. It may not be clear at this stage. It may seem blurry. But just like Joseph, you just have to trust God at all times. Amen? God had a plan for Joseph's life that even Joseph did not see at that time when he was a slave, when he was a prisoner. But his purpose was to save the nation's famine. He chose Joseph to be the instrument of salvation from that famine. Amen. God, and God, Joseph trusted God, you know, in all those situations, even if it hurts, even if it means giving up his dreams, because it certainly looked that way at one stage. And he said, I will still trust you, Lord. And as a result, God, was able to make Joseph's path straight, exalting him from prisoner in the morning to second in command in the nation of Egypt by the afternoon. How good is that? Church, a lot of you here today, God wants to use your life as an instrument that will save many. You may feel like you're a prisoner right now. You know, you're helpless, you're hopeless, but just like what God did to Joseph. He can turn your hopeless situation into your greatest victory. Amen. The purpose of changes in your life is God wants to redirect you. And point number three, reason number three is God is changing you, not the destination. God is changing you, not the destination. So good. When the Lord, you know, when, G, when God takes us on a detour, there's always a purpose. There's always a purpose for a detour. He wants to change you, but your destination will remain the same. Your victory will remain the same. Your victory is waiting for you. So why does He want to change me? Because He can't take you to your victory unless 
some excess baggage are removed in your life some grudges are removed in your life some closed heart open hatred hurt hurtful past some precious truth to pick up and some pride to let go some sins to let go you know james 1 verse 2 to 4 says when troubles of any kind come your way consider it an opportunity for great joy for you know that when your faith is tested your endurance has a chance to grow so let it grow for when your endurance is fully developed you will be perfect and complete needing nothing so good church an obstacle is an opportunity to grow stronger you know changes are not there to destroy you they are there to strengthen you amen so maybe you need to rely on God's strength to move an obstacle in your path right now so maybe you need to learn patience to wait for God to move the obstacle for you but that doesn't mean that you turn around that doesn't mean that you quit that doesn't mean that you stop because whatever you do don't let the appearance of an obstacle in your path convince you to give up because God is trying to change you in this season of your life God will finish what he starts amen and nope no, nope, no, nope, no nope, the path won't be easy that's not the promise but when you come out on the other side you will be able to point to God and proclaim that he is the one who got you through amen and it won't be through our power it won't be because of your accomplishments it won't be because of, of, of your knowledge it will be because he is God and he is strongest when you are weakest amen the scripture says that Joseph at each stop of the way he was blessed by God and that his work was blessed but the benefits of that blessing occurred to him he only seemed to suffer to fall over lower and lower and lower but still Joseph trusted God and his dreams and his future he followed God's truth rather than relying on his own understanding even as his path you know seems to uh, um, sink further and further he acknowledged his God as the sovereign of his life church if you want to follow God the way Joseph did you must trust him with everything you know trust him that he is changing you not your destination you know you must reject your own understanding of the world and the way you think it works and lean on God remember God never lets the faithful to shame he will not let the faithful go to shame it's not Noah's plan to build an ark it's not Moses plan to part the Red Sea that day you know it wasn't in David's agenda to kill a giant the next day you know it isn't Joshua's plan to march around around Jericho and it isn't the it's not the widow's plan to give Elijah her loss it's not Esther's plan to go before the king but they did it and they are delivered by God because God had a better plan because God redirected them and because God changed them but the destination the victory remains the same for them church I tell you we better think twice about how we react when things don't go our way when things don't go um, the way we think they're supposed to go the one thing that never changes is that everything except God changes because God doesn't change we can be at peace when everything else around us does when everything around us keeps changing God will remain the same God's work in our changes will help us to move forward never backward amen in every change that we face in every plot twist that we face in our life we can be sure that God is planning for our good moving us closer to him in this way we can not only embrace the change but we also welcome it I want to end it with this verse spoken by Joseph in Genesis 50 verse 20 he said you intended to harm me but God intended all for good church you may face a lot of trials right now you may think that your plot twist is hurting you but it's not there 
to harm you. It's there. God intended it to be there for your good. The Bible says everything will work together for good. Amen. Church, it's not there to harm you. God intends it there for your good. I hope you are blessed today, church. Uh, have a good Sunday. Have a good week ahead of you. And we'll see you again next week. Amazing, amazing. Who is blessed by the Word of God today? Hey, how many of you think, thank God that he, for His unfailing love and faithfulness in our life? He is all wonderful. He is almighty and sovereign God. Yet, He humbled Himself to come down and die for us when we were yet sinners, just to give us a full and abundant life. That is the greatest gift, the greatest gift, the greatest love that anybody can receive in life. So today, before we close this service, I want to extend this beautiful invitation for you to receive this gift. While this is a free gift, it did not come for free. So somebody paid for this 2,000 years ago, church, and all you got to do today is just receive. God says you don't have to do anything. We can't earn it. We can't possibly do anything. But God says just receive it because He has come to give you a new life, the life full of joy. His plans is to give you hope and future. So if that's you and you said, God, yes, God, I want to receive that gift. In just a moment, I want to lead you into a simple, simple prayer. It's simple, but it's one powerful prayer. Because as you pray this, you're actually inviting Jesus into your heart as a personal Savior. So church, are you ready to pray together with me? If that's you, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. You can do that. All right, let's go. Jesus, I confess that I need you, God. Thank you for dying on the cross and for giving all I have sins, God. Today, I want to accept your invitation. Today, I want to come home, God. I invite you, God, to come into my life. Be my personal Lord and Savior. From today onwards, lead me, guide me to live according to your ways. I receive your grace. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Church, if you just pray that prayer for the first time, you have just made the best decision in your life. What just happened? You just invited Jesus and He now lives inside of you. You're going to start a, an exciting, life-changing journey ahead of you. So what's next from here? We want to encourage you, be planted in a strong church. If you are in our area, the Movement Church is ready to welcome you to our family. Definitely, we would like to get to know more of you, hear your stories and get you connected. And on the screen right now, there is a QR code for you to go. You can fill that in so that one of our leaders can get in touch with you. We want to guide you and be part of your journey with God. We love you, church. Have a merry, jolly season with your loved ones. Who was moved by that service today? That was so good. But God's just getting started, guys, because we have the discussion questions coming up soon. Come on, let's be open and honest with one another so that we can support each other in applying this message to our lives today. And if you're not already connected with a group to discuss these questions with, go ahead and scan that QR code on your, dis on your screen. It doesn't matter where in the world you are, we want to get to know you. All right, thank you so much for joining us today, guys, during this busy holiday season. I hope you all join us next Sunday. And in the meantime, go out and have a very blessed week, and I'll see you all next week.